Hey everyone, welcome to my home kitchen. This week's genius recipe from Andrea Aliceda is for a super simple, creamy vegan salsa. In this video, you will get to see how truly minimal the prep is. You will get to see the two genius ingredients that make it both savory and tame its heat. And you will get to see how to customize it to be exactly as you like it. The prep here is super minimal. I'm just going to peel and quarter this onion and separate it into layers. I'm gonna smash all this garlic and take the peels off. And I'm going to have the serranos and scoop out the seeds. Not a lot of mincing and chopping going on here. While I get started on all of that, here is Andrea to share a little bit more about the story behind this recipe and its history through many generations of her family. My mom started making the salsa a few years ago um, and she started making it um, to sell for her friends. But that was like the first time that I remember having had it. I just remember thinking it, it was genius because um, she added, or it, it, there was peanut butter in there and um, she was really kind of like excited to kind of tell me that that, that was the secret ingredient. And um, it, it was always presented to me as a salsa that was like my great grandma salsa. And then I, that's when I came to realize that it was my great grandma salsa, but that my mom had uh, changed it up a bit by adding the peanut butter. That's the, the story in, in a nutshell. I think I said it right, I hope. <laughs> Action. I love this process with the onion separating into layers instead of chopping or mincing or doing any more use of the knife at all. We're just separating this in. <laughs> <laughs> Getting through 12 to 14 cloves of garlic would take a very long time, but not when you're just smashing and peeling. Amazing. <laughs> My, my heat tolerance has evolved as I've gotten older. Um, but yeah, I, I, I take out the, the seeds for the most part. Um, you kind of like get more of like those, those flavors and like the, the nuance and the flavors of the, of the pepper versus it just being like super spicy and kind of having the, the, that nut to like balance it out. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of my, my spin on it, just to cater to my, <laughs> my sensitive tongue. <laughs> So, okay, I just really wanna quickly show all of this stuff is what is super spicy and can burn your fingers, can burn your eyes inside of a chili. As Andrea said, she is a little bit more sensitive to the heat. This is, you know, a burn as much as you wanna burn recipe. It also conveniently does not make you cry as you're chopping onions. So it is here for you, like no matter what your relationship is to burning and crying. <laughs> Why do you cry? You don't even want to know. <laughs> I ended up going with the way that Andrea does it, just scooping it all out because I love tasting the Serrano. I love just the mild heat and I love that I can also share it with my daughter and not, you know, make her head start smoking. That was so simple. This is a tearless onion prep. I am ready to go and start cooking on the stove back there. Like, I don't know if you want to see in here, there's about two cups of oil in here to really be able to hit the chilies and onions and garlic with lots of oil to, to open up their flavors and get them sizzling. To check if it's hot, I'm just kind of sticking this onion in. There, looking good. I'm gonna add all of these carefully. Okay, so basically I'm just making sure that all of my little layers are separated. Nobody's kind of clumping up together. You don't wanna get them super golden and crispy. For one thing, it can make the chilies bitter, but also it can just make them a little bit tougher and chewier and they won't blend as smooth in the blender. So we're just opening up the flavors, but not cooking them super crispy. That's done. The onion's translucent, the chilies are blistered, the garlic is golden. A little bit, but not too much. I'm gonna bring it over here carefully and scoop it into the food processor. Oops, make sure my trivet's in the right spot. I thought this was gonna be my best slotted spoon option and I think I chose wrong, actually. So if you're wondering what's gonna happen with this oil, good things. Part of it you're gonna use to blend into the salsa to make it creamy. 
this is good, don't get rid of it. That needs to cool for a little bit. I would love to hear from Andrea about all the different ways that different people in her family have blended it totally differently depending on their tastes, and you can too. So my great grandma used to um, make it more, give it like more like a guacamole consistency, so she wouldn't blend it all the way like as I do and as my mom does um, to get that really smooth consistency she kind of left it like a little bit more chunky I would say that you you want to put all your vegetables first in in the um, if you're using a blender you want to like kind of like blend that in first and then start slowly adding in um, your oil so that it emulsifies well so that you get a really nice velvety texture um, and so that your salsa doesn't break so that's just something to to be like, very mindful of is just as you're blending, just slowly kind of just start trickling in the, the oil and you can always use the rest of that oil to cook with and it's... This is nice and cool. Now we can add the two genius ingredients, the peanut butter and bouillon. These are the things that are making it, in the peanut butter's case, creamy, nutty, savory, and then this bouillon is making it super savory and well-rounded. And there is just no better way to do this than just with your finger, your very clean finger. And now a little salt. Oh, that, that's that, that. There it is. <laughs> All right. All right, you wanna see Chunky? So if you want it chunkier, you could stop there. I'm gonna keep going till smooth. Yum, oh my gosh, it smells so good. I'm gonna go a little bit smoother. And this is actually a good time to start drizzling in some of that oil, which you can use, as Andrea told me, as much of the oil as you want to get exactly the creaminess you want. Mmm, let me get my chips. I am going to eat these in the simplest possible way, just with chips or because I forgot to order chips with tostadas that I'm going to break up into chips. But Andrea has a lot of other ideas for other great ways to serve it. Here she is. My great grandma would probably have served it over some type of meat dish, um, like a red meat dish probably. My mom, she loves snacking on it with like some bread, either like a French baguette or slices of sourdough bread. I love putting it in like my tofu scrambles. I love putting it in my tortas and sandwiches. I love putting it in like my tetelas and tlacoyos and tacos and <laughs> all the tea foods. <laughs> Yum. That is so good. The heat just kind of slowly sneaks up on you. It's just hitting me now. It starts out nutty, creamy, savory, a little bit sweet from like the softened onions. And then it just kind of creeps up on you. It is delicious. I would really love to hear what you will do with it. If you would like to hear more from Andrea about this recipe and her family, please tune into the Genius Recipe Tapes episode this week, anywhere you get your podcasts. If you want more recipes like this, be sure to hit like and subscribe. You'll get all the Genius recipes and you'll be supporting everything that Food52 is doing. Thank you so much. We will see you in two weeks.